going to discuss our paper, Neural Time Series with Gluon TS, which is an open source library for time series research developed by my group at Amazon. And you'll see the link here, which will provide you with APIs, tutorials, as well as the GitHub link. So here's an overview of our team at Amazon. So we're in the ML forecasting team, which is spread out throughout Berlin and the Palo Alto office within AI, AWS AI Lab. And we're under Tim Jamikowski. So this is joint work with my whole group. So a little bit about the history of how neural networks have interacted with forecasting. So surprisingly, we see even in the late 60s, thank you, even in the late 60s to late 80s, we see neural network methods being applied in forecasting, except in this case, it's for single time series. And what happens in the late 90s is we see that the results seem um, a bit mixed. And the winner of the M3 competition is a simple method, which we saw neural networks phasing out of popularity around this time. It's not until the resurgence of neural networks around 2012 when neural network methods get applied to forecasting again. Except in this context, it's going to be applied to a large collection of time series where we're going to see these methods perform better. So in 2014, we see sequence to sequence architectures as well as RNNs and CNNs get applied to forecasting across multiple time series. Up until this year, when the winner of the M4 competition was a combination of neural networks and classical models, which we'll discuss is also available within our package and is a promising research direction. So a quick overview of the Gluon TS design principles. So first, it's modular, meaning that we've broken it down into small components that have clear interfaces to offer different abstraction levels for different users. So one of our main user base would be for scientists who want to build new models. So here we have small components that they can use to develop these models, as well as it's reproducible, um, which gives a very flexible framework for scientists. In particular, you can use a log file to define your configuration and parameters and rerun the experiment from that given log file. On the opposite end of the spectrum from scientists who we also like to support would be practitioners who just want to use an out of the box model. So we also provide baseline models within the package. Second, it's scalable. So we've designed it to have models and components to scale from small to large data sets. In particular, all data processing APIs use Python iterators for data sets, inputs, and outputs of the different components. And it's also stable. We have reusable components for hyperparameter parsing and validation, feature generation, date handling logic, error logic, serialization, container packaging. And these help take care of the heavy lifting for you without imposing rigid constraints on the model structure. So let's go over the general problem. So here you'll see plotted, we have a univariate time series. The observations are given by ZT and the input covariance are given by XT. And the X axis here is time. So what are we trying to do in forecasting? We're trying to predict the future values. In particular, for a given item I, we want to predict the values in the future up until forecast horizon of tau, given the past observations, as well as all of the covariance. And we hope to use this forecast to be able to make optimal downstream decisions, which we'll see by the second equation. So our library is not only supports forecasting methods, but also time series methods in general, in particular smoothing for missing value imputation and anomaly detection. So in missing value imputation, you're also trying to learn a joint distribution over ZI team. And at that point, the time values are not necessarily in the future. They could be at any arbitrary time at which you have a missing value. Similarly, in anomaly detection, you want to find the corresponding observations at the points where you have anomalies. So we can think about in general, this library could be used to solve anything that would like to predict a joint distribution at arbitrary points in time. And here we have a diagram of the main Gluon TS packages. I'm going to highlight a couple of these. So first we have core and support packages, which are going to provide functionality for object serialization and hyperparameter validation, as I mentioned earlier, as well as utility methods to construct a time series of partial sums. You'll see we also have a shell package. If you use the shell package, this actually lets you interface with Amazon SageMaker, so you can run training more efficiently. Um, although Gluon TS will run on your laptop as well in Python. 
Another package we have is the data set package. So this would be one package that you would start with. This will help you load your data and analyze your data. So here we provide utilities for reading and writing data sets, as well as calculating data set statistics. And it gives you a data set repository abstraction. So we make a data set loader class, which consists of Python iterators. The transform package is used to do your feature processing pipeline. And we'll see examples of this later. One of the most important packages would be the model package. So here you'll see that you'll implement an estimator interface, which will inherit from our base estimator class. And you'll define a train method that will return a predictor. The predictor will then be used to evaluate your metrics and also plot your forecasts. So within this model, we have reusable components for construction of other neural network based models. And those are provided in the network block and distribution packages. So the network package defines network architectures. In block, we have reusable gluon blocks. So you'll see that gluon TS is written in symbolic hybrid forward gluon form. And we also provide a probability distributions package. So this is almost a standalone package that you can use for um, different probability distributions. So lastly, you'd like to be able to evaluate the accuracy of your forecasting models. And how do we typically do that? That's with back testing. So we also have a back test package that will split all time series at a specific point in time and use the first part for training your model and the second part for the evaluation. So if we think back to the picture, everything to the left of the green line would be your training set and to the right in the future would be your evaluation accuracy. And we provide simple back testing as well as more complicated scenarios such as rolling evaluations. So now that we've seen it at a high level, let's look at what are the example components of these. So for example, for the time series transformations, we provide splitting and padding of time series for evaluation splits, as well as a box box transform. You can also mark special points in time and missing values. Most importantly, we have a flexible design for the user to define custom transformations. So you can define your own feature processing transformations, as well as combine them with existing ones provided in the package. In terms of our probability distribution library, we provide real parametric distributions such as single variate and multivariate Gaussian, students T, gamma distribution, and Laplacian distribution. For the discrete distributions, we also have negative binomial, and we also provide non-parametric distributions such as splines. In our backtesting scenario, we output several different metrics. So for example, we have the mean absolute scale error, the mate metric, and also the scaled mate, as well as the quantile losses. So the output from our models are probabilistic forecasts. So quantile losses can be useful in evaluating these as well. And we provide the weighted and unweighted form, as well as the continuous rank probability score. So now let's look at a sample piece of code here of how you can actually use glue on TS. So you see the first thing you want to do is you load your data set. So we call the get data set routine on electricity, which is an open source data set from UC Irvine, which is provided in Gluon TS as well. You'll see it has three out points, meta, train DS, and test DS. So meta contains all of the meta information of your um, data set. And the training and tests provides the split data set for you at that particular time point. Here you'll see we're calling the estimator, which is our model. So we're using the built-in deep AR estimator. And it's taking these three parameters as input. We can provide the frequency, which is given in the metadata under the time granularity for you. And prediction links will just be how far in the future do you want to predict, namely your forecast horizon, as well as a trainer. So here you'll see we have a built-in trainer class, which handles the stochastic gradient descent optimization for you, as well as the backpropagation. And you can define the optim optimization parameters that you'd like to pass into the trainer here. So here you'll see in this example, we're doing the optimization over 20 epochs, which about with a batch size of 32 batches per epoch. And you can also specify the step length, any optimization parameters you would like here. So once we have our estimator, we can call the train method since that's defined for every estimator and get our predictor. With the predictor here, we're going to compute the back test metrics. So in particular, you'll see we're computing the P10, P50, and P90 quantile loss here. And the output of backtest metrics is going to give you the aggregate metrics over all your items, as well as the item level metrics.
In this other example here, you'll see another um, excerpt of code. Here we're using the defining the train and test split at a particular time point. But what I wanted to highlight here is you can also plot your forecast using matplotlib, which we'll see with the last line of code here. You can just call dot plot. And on the right, you'll see the probabilistic forecast as indicated by the light blue region there. So now let's talk about the models um, that are a part of Blue on TS and how they're assembled by the different components. So one of the main ideas of this slide is that we've built specific models for the user to use out of the box, but you can also use the given components to build your own models. So for example, we can think of DeepAR as being a combination of using the distribution. So you can define your own distribution. We have student T or Gaussian or negative binomial combined with the canonical network. Um, R, CNN, and QR is based off of MQR and N, and that's composed of the quantile output distribution and sequence to sequence. The last two are newer methods, deep state and deep factor. So these are combinations of classical neural network based models with local models, and these are to come. And I just wanted to highlight that these are composed of probabilistic components and a canonical network. So looking at these methods in a bit more detail, we'll see on the left we have state space models. So in a state space model, you're trying to calculate the probability of the latent state LT given LT minus one, and you have a state space equation. And then you'll use that to calculate the probability of ZT given LT. So classical models for time series forecasting such as ARIMA and ETS could be placed in the state space model format for a specified transition equation. So we provide this flexibility and a common filter for that. On the right, you'll see we also support Gaussian processes. You can use that as out of the box Gaussian process solver and also for time series specifically. So on the right, you'll see we start with five blue data points and these are three samples from the Gaussian process posterior plotted as well as the uncertainty region plus or minus one standard deviation in gray. For Gaussian processes, we support exact inference with RBF and periodic kernels. So let's get to the RNN based forecasting models. So we can break them up into two categories. We have the canonical, which is one to one. We have one node going to one hidden unit versus sequence to sequence, which you can think of as many to many. We have many nodes going to many hidden units. And here we're gonna highlight deep AR as a canonical example and MQR and N as a sequence to sequence example. So here you'll see deep AR and we provided the reference for more information, but here we have a canonical network where we're taking one to, one node to one hidden unit, and here yt is going to be given by a parametric distribution. So what we need to do is estimate the parameters of this parametric distribution. In this case, we have a Gaussian, so we need to learn the mean and standard deviation. You can also make deep AR go distribution free by utilizing splines. So here we can directly model the conditional quantile function instead of using parametric distributions. So here's an example of a sequence to sequence model now, which you can think of as an encoder decoder model. So how well does the prediction reconstruct the decoding sequence giving an encoding sequence? And we see that this is similar to multivariate regression. So within Glue and TS, we provide a flexible sequence to sequence framework. So you can even build your own sequence to sequence models. Here we provide CNNQR, which is a variant of MQRNN defined in the above paper. And these are exciting future models to appear. Um, deep state space was a model that we developed at NIPS this year, and deep factor was actually a paper here. And what do these do? They combine neural networks with classical approaches. So you can think of deep state as taking a state space model and parameterizing it with a neural network. And in this case, we support common filters and LDS for that. On the right, you'll see deep factor. These Diamond nodes, GT, are the fixed effects as output from an RNN, and RIT are going to be a random effect. So these are the local model that will fit one time series at a time. Then your latent function, UIT, is going to be a sum of your fixed global effects from the neural network with the local effects there. And for example, these RITs could be a Gaussian process within Glue NTS. And then I also wanted to highlight we benchmarked open source data set results across all the methods that we have within Glue NTS, as well as comparing to the classical methods within the R forecasting package. So here you'll see on the left, auto REMA and auto OTS, which are part of the R forecasting package, are also available through Glue NTS. 
as well as Facebook's profit open source method, which is a Bayesian based method. And it also highlights other methods that we have. So MBTS is the non-parametric time series. So this basically is going to predict the future based on a past value. And at this time, it's going to be randomly sampled, which contrasts the naive seasonal predictor, which takes the past um, time point or past seasonal time point. We also provide transformer methods, um, which are popular in NLP, and use attentions. And then you'll see um, the sequence to sequence and canonical methods here, as well as the GP. And we see for different data sets, different um, methods provide better accuracy. And these results are averaged over 10 runs, and we're plotting the mean and standard deviation. So I'd like to highlight other future events that our team is doing. So we'll be presenting at ISF next week, as well as doing tutorials on Gluon TS at Sigmoid and KDD. Um, so contact us if you'd like to learn more. We have the GitHub link at the bottom. And you feel free to contribute to or complain about <laughs> work or use Gluon TS. Any feedback is welcome for us. So we're really excited to have this open sourced. And as a side note, we're also hiring. So we have openings in our Berlin and Palo Alto office for scientists, engineers, and interns, as well as offices in New York and Seattle. Um, so talk to us further for any details. And I've also provided references here um, since I went into the models at a pretty high level detail. So if you want more details, um, you can see the papers here. <laughs>